What happens when you suddenly grow horns, breathe fire, call lightning, and no one cares? Ruby Dragon, what it's like growing up. I've been following the series for a while, but it was on hiatus for two years because the author was sick. I didn't think it would get continued, but thankfully the author got better and here we are. Despite the premise, Ruri Dragon is a simple slice of life about growing up. It's about Ruri Aoki, who suddenly grows horns and learns that her dad is a dragon. Despite this crazy news, she accepts it rather quickly and doesn't think much of it. Nor does she really want to, to save some brain cells. So she got horns, breathes fire, calls lightning, but is just a regular high school girl. A socially awkward one at that. Ruri does have a friend named Yuka, and they are really close. But other than her, Ruri isn't particularly fond of talking, meeting, or trying to interact with people, even her fellow students. She also doesn't remember her classmates' names, and sometimes even their faces, which obviously can lead to some awkward moments. Besides her poor social skills, Ruri is also lacking in the athletic department. She may be half dragon, but that doesn't seem to help. She loses to her mom in basketball, baseball, tennis, and ping pong. Just look at that volleyball skill. And while not lacking, Ruri isn't the brightest, but nor is she dumb. She is just average. After missing a whole week of school, of course she would be behind and would need to work to catch up. She's human, despite the dragon-ness. In fact, the only real conflict in this manga, so far at least, has nothing to do with Ruri's dragon traits. It has to do with her human traits, her inability to socialize, which seems to be a problem with a girl named Maida. Ruri first meets her during lunch, where Maida doesn't want to eat with Ruri, straight up saying she was a problem. We automatically assume it's because she's scared or something about the dragon traits, you know, breathing fire, and Ruri does too. Maida's next appearance is equally hostile as they're forced together as the day's class helpers, but this time Ruri initiates, at first with some small talk. Being ignored, Ruri then tries to find out why Maida dislikes her, to no success, and is shot down rather quickly. Shocking Ruri, and you can tell she definitely felt it. We even get small microaggressions here and there from just eye contact. And when Ruri is forced on the sports committee, she finds out, a bit too late, that Maida is there as well. Don't they seem just so excited to see each other? Ruri again tries to start some small talk, but Maida is being hostile like usual. Like last time, from ours and Ruri's perspective, it seems like Maida is the aggressor. Well, because she sorta is. This all comes to a boiling point where they begin arguing. Ruri rightfully annoyed that Maida hates her for seemingly no reason, and Maida seemingly hating Ruri for no reason. But when they're called into the meeting and chill out, Maida sticks up for Ruri, stopping the usual questions. So it seems like Maida isn't pure hate. But still, Maida admits that she does not like Ruri. But the reason? Ruri doesn't care about other people. Well, she's right, and it seems like Ruri knows that as well. But a confrontingly truthful statement. So what happens? How does Ruri deal with this? While deciding for the sports backdrop, they actually bond over their designs and art skills, Ruri's lack thereof, and Maida's talent. Maida maintains her point of Ruri not being interested in other people, and Ruri clearly understands. But surprisingly, Maida just randomly apologizes for what she said. She did mean it, but wasn't trying to be so aggressive. Maida even validates Ruri's designs despite the obvious art flaws. Well, Maida apologized, now the ball's in Ruri's court, and it sort of bothers her. So one day during lunch, Ruri decides to ditch Yuka and find Maida, asking if anyone's joining her for lunch. No. So Ruri grabs a seat and says let's have lunch together, shocking everyone. What productive socializing, just to be aggressive and leave no time to respond. This is the real story behind Ruri Dragon, breaking out of her shell. Everyone pushes Ruri to communicate more. It's not that she can't, she just doesn't really want to. Ruri's quick to judge and make assumptions, and no shit, this comes to bite her in the ass. Personified in the form of Maida, who is very straightforward with Ruri's social problems. The manga focuses on what Ruri does to face these problems, intentionally or accidentally. For example, Kashiro, the first person other than Yuka who asks to touch the horns, calling them cute. Friendly enough, but Ruri calls her the in-your-face, pigtail-dyed, two different colors girl, admitting that she didn't even know Kashiro's name until Yuka told her, despite sitting next to each other, because sunny balls of energy freak her out, for which Yuka rightfully calls her out for being prejudiced. 
Yuri is right about Kashiro being very energetic, but seems to view this as a negative. However, it's Kashiro who initiates their first meaningful interaction. As I mentioned earlier, Ruri missed an entire week of school because of a fire-related issue, and is fallen behind. Kashiro notices and offers to tutor Ruri, who at first declines, but quickly regrets it. Seeing this, Kashiro once again offers help, but this time being a bit more forceful, teaching Ruri without her having time to respond. It's here that Ruri learns Kashiro isn't as she thought, admitting to assuming Kashiro was a bimbo because of her hair and personality confessing her inability to deal with visually loud people. Kashido claps back, saying she doesn't know how to deal with Ruri either, calling her out on judging people based on first impressions, and how Ruri glares at people. Ruri then asks why Kashido had reached out in the first place. Well, that's where being an extrovert comes in. Just because Kashido doesn't know how to handle Ruri doesn't mean she has to hold it against her. Kashido likes talking to people to break down that weird wall. Being friendly is better than being enemies, especially since they sit right next to each other. She also encourages Ruri to try to speak up a bit more, even if it's just a bit. Besides, Kashido thinks Ruri is cute, including the horns, and invites her to get some buck stars. Despite Ruri seeing Kashido in a new light, she's still terrified about going to buck stars and asks Yuka to go along with her, since, like many socially awkward people, Ruri felt intimidated by the atmosphere, feeling like she doesn't fit in. But Yuka makes a good point here. Does anyone really judge and care? Well, let's shift over to Yuka here, Ruri's childhood friend. Yuka knows that Ruri is uncomfortable around a lot of people and doesn't like socializing. Just look at her face when Ruri is surrounded by classmates. But even Yuka tells Ruri that it's good to talk to more people since they're in high school now, pushing Ruri to work with Maida because of their committee pairs, despite their animosity. At the same time, she reels in Ruri from being too popular due to her horns particularly with letting guys touch them. So, now that Kashiro invites Ruri out, Yuka pushes her to go alone without her. It's because of this that Ruri finally starts another friendship with Kashiro, and realizes that other people are, naturally, decent and don't hate her. It's also Kashiro who told Maida that she was being too blunt, which prompted her to apologize to Ruri. However, Ruri still thinks people accept her because her mom is pulling strings behind the scenes because she came in and apologized when Ruri breathed fire, ensuring that there's nothing to be afraid of. And here, I have to highlight the mill Ruri's mom, to show how big of an impact good parenting can have. She's just a great parent, period. For example, when Ruri first breathed fire in class, coughing up blood and passing out, Ruri's understandably annoyed that her mom took so long. And not only that, she would naturally be angry about the whole hidden dragon dad. So? Ruri's mom actually apologizes. This conversation is just so human, it really seems like a talk a parent would give, and the way they should do it. At least, should. Apologizing, acknowledging, and showing that she cares. That day Ruri first grew horns, she didn't just hurry to leave for work. She went to the mountains to meet with the dragon dad, to learn more about what's happening to Ruri. Just some grade A parenting that continues throughout the story. She constantly helps Ruri, bonds with her too, playing video games and taking time off work to have a picnic, to train her abilities, going to the arcade together, crushing Ruri in sports, just nice, wholesome mother-daughter stuff. She also pushes Ruri when she needs to, convincing her to go back to school via calling Yuka, brilliant move, and pressuring her to interact with her fellow students at the arcade. And this is what I love about Ruri Dragon. It's not about the horns, breathing fire, or calling lightning. It's a story about Ruri Aoki, an average, socially awkward girl who learns to socialize. A boring premise, possibly overdone, but I promise you, if you have a bit of time to kill, just read it. It's short, it's happy, it's nice. I also love the detail that as she grows and gains more dragon traits, her eyes progressively change. Just a nice little detail. Okay, that's it, goodbye. <laughs>